It seems like everything you can connect to a TV or monitor has an HDMI port, but somehow DisplayPort, which is largely able to just do the same thing, has stuck around for years on our computers. So what's the point of having two connectors that are seemingly interchangeable? Well, it turns out HDMI and DisplayPort were designed with different uses in mind. HDMI hit the scene in 2003 and was mostly backed by companies involved in the home theater side of consumer electronics. Think Panasonic, Philips, and Sony, for example. Digital cable boxes, HDTVs, and DVD players were starting to take off, and movie and TV studios worked with the companies that made these devices on a connection that supported copy protection. DisplayPort, on the other hand, didn't come along until 2008 and was designed specifically with computers in mind by VESA the same folks that standardized those mounting holes so you could stick a big screen on your wall. VESA members included big players in the PC industry such as Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, Microsoft, and Apple. DisplayPort was meant to replace older standards like VGA and DVI, and for the longest time, DisplayPort was ahead of HDMI in terms of performance. For example, DisplayPort 1.2, which came out in 2010, supported 4K at 60 hertz. I mean, there are plenty of PCs that still struggle with gaming at that resolution and frame rate today. Meanwhile, HDMI 1.4, which was the dominant standard back then, only supported 4K 30Hz, meaning anyone with a powerful GPU had to be careful which connector they were using. Early versions of DisplayPort also supported features that HDMI lacked, like VESA Adaptive Sync, meaning it could work with AMD FreeSync more than two years before HDMI 2.1 brought official support for variable refresh rates. But fast forward to 2022, and both HDMI and DisplayPort's most recent revisions are seriously impressive. They each support all the major flavors of HDR, lossless audio, and seriously sky-high resolutions. HDMI 2.1 maxes out at 10K 120 hertz, while DisplayPort 2.0 gives you 16K at 60 hertz, or 10K at 80 hertz. Sure, I have a display like that. So are HDMI and DisplayPort meaningfully differentiated anymore other than just the connector? They are. And we'll tell you about that right after we tell you about our sponsor, iFixit. iFixit wants to help you fix all of your devices so you never have to pay for a costly replacement again. From your Xbox to your toothbrush, iFixit has parts and guides for almost any device you can think of. Over 70,000 step-by-step guides with photos to make it easy. Check out ifixit.com slash techwiki to pick up a repair kit and join the right to repair movement today. If you want to use NVIDIA's full implementation of G-Sync, you have to use DisplayPort as it doesn't work over HDMI for the time being. DisplayPort also supports VESA's new Adaptive Sync certification program, with the goal being to inform you quickly, by the use of a spiffy logo, whether the monitor's variable refresh rate technology will reliably work across a wide range of frame rates. But do keep in mind that HDMI 2.1 supports VRR, so you should have at least some protection against screen tearing no matter what you go with. Another key difference is that DisplayPort allows daisy chaining, meaning you can connect multiple displays to just one port as long as those monitors have a pass-through port. This is especially useful if you need to use several monitors at once for work or for something like photo editing, but aren't rocking a fancy GPU with tons of ports. An HDMI port can't carry more than one video signal, which means you need additional equipment for a multi-monitor setup without DisplayPort. But one area where HDMI is more useful is ARC, which stands for Audio Return Channel. If you have an HDMI display connected to a receiver, you can cut down on cable clutter because ARC sends an audio signal back down the same HDMI cable. So if you got audio originating from a Netflix app on your TV, it can piggyback on that one HDMI cable all the way down to your speakers. And HDMI also allows you to adjust the volume with your display's remote if you're using something like an HDMI soundbar. So both ports have their strengths, but you can see that they're designed for different use cases despite the fact that they both carry insanely high quality video signals. Sure, it would be nice if we could use one port for absolutely everything, but what's the fun in that? Huge thanks for watching, hit like, don't hit dislike, check out our other videos. Actually, I guess you can hit dislike, no one sees it anymore. Does it even matter? Uh, comment your video suggestions down below and just have a great day.